Good afternoon. Welcome to our webinar today titled Introduction to Zigbee Mesh Networking. My name is John Crockett and I'm part of the marketing department here at Digi. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to our speaker today. Jordan Husney is one of the lead engineers here at Digi and is heavily involved with uh, building up our wireless technology offering. Much of Jordan's time these days is involved with taking our line of XP products and enhancing their connectivity options using the growing family of Connect Cortex gateways. And now I'm going to turn things over to Jordan. Thank you, John. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to the uh, 802.15.4 and Zigbee Mesh Networking presentation. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give an um, introduction to both of these technologies and uh, explain in some technical detail some of the more exciting features of um, how Zigbee actually works to create these uh, self-forming and self-healing networks. Uh, so what I'd like to do is I'd actually like to start um, by talking a little bit about the fundamentals of Zigbee. So what, what is Zigbee? Zigbee is a low-cost, low-power, security-enabled uh, and reliable wireless networking technology. It was uh, it came together as a as a, uh, a standard from a variety of, of different folks involved in the automated meter reading market, building automation, uh, industrial automation, where people wanted to make their devices speak together in the wireless domain. So I'm going to show you here a diagram of where Zigbee fits relative to a lot of the other wireless technologies that exist today. Um, you can see on the left, uh, there's the data rate, where up is faster. And you can see here the range, where going over to the right is further in distance. Um, you can see Zigbee is right here, sort of kind of pancake-shaped here in the bottom. What this is showing you is relative to technologies like Wi-Fi or ultra-wideband for video, Zigbee is relatively slow, but it can actually go quite far. Uh, we actually make Zigbee modules in our XB Pro line that can actually go about 1.5 kilometers from line of sight. Um, Zigbee is a, a very, very robust networking technology. Even though the data rate is low, you actually get that. Um, at, you, get, you get distance sort of in the trade-off there. So um, you're able to actually sort of penetrate these um, environments where there might be a lot of, of other RF noise. Um, so if we compare some of the wireless uh, standards together, uh, let's take a look at 802.11b and compare it to Bluetooth and Zigbee. You'll see that Zigbee is really it will excel in battery life. It's a very low power technology. It'll last uh, for years. Um, it's extremely simple to set up. Um, we actually design our products such that uh, when, they're, when they come pre-commissioned from our factory or from your manufacturing um, environment, that you simply just turn them on and they find each other and they form a network all by themselves. Um, Zigbee networks are very scalable relative to these other two technologies. You can have uh, about 32 nodes or 32 computers, 32 devices per access point in 802.11b. In uh, with Zigbee, you can have in theory up to about 65,000. Um, we've we've actually seen uh, these scale um, into hundreds and thousands of nodes already. Um, they're very very fast to join the network. Uh, Wi-Fi devices, 802.11b devices, can take seconds to enumerate. Bluetooth, even longer. Um, Zigbee, from a, from a dead power off, will actually enumerate, and they will find each other in, uh, in, in less than 30 milliseconds. Um, the range uh, between these things, you can actually see that, that uh, here, Zigbee far outclasses Bluetooth, um, at, at, even at a significant power savings to Bluetooth. Um, 802.11b will actually reach um, within the same range of, of Zigbee, um, but again, Zigbee is, is much lower power. Uh, you can see, however, that Zigbee, really one of its large benefits is that it's a, an extensible uh, network technology. You can, you can just stick nodes together to form these autonomous mesh networks 
wherein intermediate nodes um, can actually repeat data on behalf of other nodes. And I'll show you what that looks like later in this presentation. Um, but you can see the data rate for Zigbee is actually quite low compared to the other technologies. Um, Bluetooth is, uh, the present iteration of Bluetooth is about 1 megabit per second. Um, 11B is 11 megabits per second, or G, 54 megabits per second. Zigbee is at a relatively pokey 256, uh, 250 kilobits per second. Um, so it's really not intended for applications like streaming video or uh, high fidelity streaming audio. It's really for telemetry and other low data rate applications. Um, all of these technologies are secure. Um, Zigbee has a 128-bit AES uh, encryption, and you can certainly impose your own encryption layer on top of it if you wish. So uh, let's look at the foundation. Um, actually, 802.11, I'm sorry, 802.15.4 is uh, very closely related to uh, Zigbee. It's actually the foundational layer of Zigbee. Um, it's an IEEE standard, and uh, it supports uh, natively the following topologies. You can run it in a point-to-point -point mode from node A to node B. You can run it in a point-to-multi-point -point node where you sort of have a central master and a bunch of little slave devices on the outside. There are two different uh, types of nodes. There are these things that, that are called full function devices or FFDs and these other nodes called RFDs which are reduced function devices. Um, the, the coordinator node, the FFD, needs to be fully powered all the time. Uh, the end nodes can be battery powered. Um, 802.15.4 specifies that it uses the carrier sense multiple access collision avoidance um, type of network access. So it's, it's just like Wi-Fi or Ethernet in the way that uh, device, devices will stop from talking over one another by sort of listening before they talk. Um, it imposes a, a layer of reliability in that um, nodes will actually have some some point-to-point uh, -point acknowledgments. Um, and it uses two different addressing modes. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a bit. Uh, you've got the 64-bit hardware address, uh, known as the IEEE address. And then you have the 16-bit short address that's actually assigned by the coordinator. Um, all of the 802.15.4 nodes have up to 16 digital spread spectrum channels. And you'll see um, here's what a, a very typical 802.15.4 network looks like. One thing that's important to see here is that you've got the coordinator here in the middle and you've got these end devices that are sort of radiating out. This is a star topology or a point to multipoint network. One thing that's uh, very important to note about this is that all of the uh, end nodes actually have to be within radio range of each other in order to be able to communicate with one another. There's no repeating or anything that goes on in the 802.15.4 network. This actually has some desirable characteristics over Zigbee, one of which is that you can more or less uh, count on a bounded latency. You can sort of know, um, since there's no, there's no uh, multi-hopping going on here, that if I'm transmitting from one node to another, that it is more or less going to take the same amount of time all the time. Um, so let's talk about Zigbee. Well, you can see here on the bottom of this diagram that 802.15.4 actually forms that foundational layer of the, of the Zigbee stack. Zigbee itself is really just sort of a, a routing layer and an application services layer that's built on top of 802.15.4. 